Hello, 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 and welcome to the recording booth. My name is Informa, and welcome to the first of my many brand new SFM tutorials. You can see here I have things much more organized than I did before, and hopefully this can simplify things for both me and the viewers alike. So anyway, I'm going to be teaching you the very basics of SFM today with get while we get started create a session, learn the basic controls, import audio, spawn lights and models, create and moving the camera, moving and rotating models, basic light settings, slider basics, and we're going to end off with basic rendering today. Anywho, I will meet you once I get on Steam. First step of getting started with SFM, of course, is getting Steam, which is not hard. You just have to install it onto your computer. It doesn't hurt you. It's a beautiful game browser. And this is where you get Source Filmmaker. So if you want to get that, you're going to want to head to the store. Just so I can get it genuinely. Let's go to store. Hit store again. And we're going to want to type in Source Film. And it should pop up since there's another Source Film product available. So let's click that. Now you're going to see... The page for Source Filmmaker, you scroll down, and hey look, it's free. Most some people always ask me, like, how much does Source Filmmaker cost? Where do you get it? And here's your answer right here. You're gonna download it, it's gonna take you a while because it's a big program, so you're gonna want to wait a little bit. If you haven't installed SFM, I would recommend you pause this and download it, and if you already have it, we can continue on with the next step of this tutorial. Once you have SFM, you're going to go to your library, software, click launch, and then just hit launch again. And then you'll see in a moment, a big window is going to pop up. Ignore that. And you're going to be introduced with this screen. So here's the name of your session. This is the file name that it's going to be saved under. So I already have it as the name tutorial because I've tried recording this about three or four times. We have the directory which is just the default directory you want this session to be saved into which I would keep that the same and your frame rate well that's how many frames per second is going to be in you can choose many of these options but it can be changed later if you really want to so let's change it to 30 and you can open your recent stuff as well this can be very useful for trying to find recent things that you've done or if you want to go into every session in a big folder, you can hit open. And now we're going to hit create. And, well, we have this little thing up here. Don't just ignore that for the moment. That happens every time I do that. But now we're going to do one other thing because I forgot again to put it in the thing in this tutorial. You're going to want to right click and hit load map. And you'll be introduced with a screen. Let's just show everything on here. You got a bunch of maps here. The map I'm going to be using for this is Black Void, which you can just get by typing in void. Hit open. This will take a second. And we're going to be introduced into a black screen, which I will explain in a moment. While the dog trots upstairs, I'm going to teach you how to get out of this darkness, teaching the basic controls you're going to want to learn in SFM. First up, you're definitely wanting, going to want to hit right click and enable lighting. Bam, there's your map. Now let's go here and let's hit the no camera. We got a work camera and you can use while holding the left click. You can move your mouse around to rotate all around. Use the WASD keys to move. Kind of like in a game to an extent. But you can hold shift to go fast and control if you want to go really slowly for those precise movements. So I like going fast, so I usually hold shift and let's start around here. So you're gonna wanna right click for some of your normal stuff, left click for selecting and for moving around the camera. And for the timeline, you can right click, get settings. That's how you usually get into your settings. But also you can do up, down, which will send you, down will send you to the end of your shot, left, will send you one frame back and right will send you one frame forward. Very good for setting specific keyframes. M is used to set a, set a single keyframe. 
this can be used on multiple things not too useful on the timeline itself but you can also click the playhead click and drag that to move around so we're going to set it to about five seconds and what are we going to do let's move back one frame and make sure we have it clicked hit B and you'll split up your shot we're gonna be doing most things in shot one so let's hit up to go back to the beginning we're gonna go into our motion editor you can also go into the graph editor which is way more important for animation this one's just good for general convenience and here you can't move many assets at all so I'd suggest going into the motion editor and now something else that you'll want to do is go and click this little arrow change scene camera new camera so you have camera one and I will meet you in the next session importing audio into SFM is very important for pretty much most anything if you want to get a custom sound into it so we're going to be using that audio we're going to crop it a little bit I recommend using audacity but I'm pretty sure any voice recording software that has the ability to export to WAV could work so we're going to go to file export or export not import export as WAV and we're going to be titling this tutorial I already have something recorded because I failed the tutorial but anyway the directory you're going to want to go into is program files 80, 86 steam steam apps common source filmmaker game user mod and then finally sound and you're gonna to want to save it in there as WAV signed 16-bit PCM that's what always has worked for me and I've never really had many errors with it so we're gonna hit save yes we already have something there and we're gonna hit OK now let's jump back into Source Filmmaker and you're gonna be wondering where's the audio where do you put the audio you're gonna scroll down over here with a little scroll bar you're gonna see sound there's also other stuff for like overlay we're gonna mess with that on a later date But anyway right click into any of these areas I'm gonna choose music and then add clip to track and now there we go we have our audio I do not want to use that for the tutorial so I'm going to delete it and now that you know how to import the audio let's get on to the next part of the tutorial shall we now what's more important than sound in SFM the visuals so what are we gonna do is right click on this left box over here and create a new animation set for model a model that we could use how about we get springtrap v9 from fails and let's 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 grab this model right here for convenience it's a model you, you all should be familiar with and it's a fun little model to test on so here we have our model and you can see there's no lighting let's right click enable our lighting and you can see we just have eyes but this is what lighting is for create a new animation set for light and bam you have your light but the thing is you can't just move your light all willy-nilly like that no what you'll have to do and what you'll have to do with cameras short after is click the light and drag it to the screen and here you can move around your lights now we're gonna focus more on lighting a little bit later in this video but for now I think we should move on to the next session the eyes are the gateway to the soul so the soul of SFM is within the camera so what we're going to want to do is move our camera to an appropriate angle right click again and create animation set for existing elements we created an element earlier within our camera so we're gonna hit that camera one and you can see we can't move our camera anymore if we click around but if we click and hold the camera like we did with our, our light we can move that around and now we have all these little settings over here that we did not have before and we have a visual representation of our camera you can have multiple cameras and set the bump in multiple angles if it's so use if it's useful but most of the time you'll just find it not too terribly useful but I'm gonna move my field of view you usually want to have your field of view around right here because otherwise it's gonna to look too stretched out unless it's very dependent on the shot I wouldn't really mess with that too terribly much but anyway now that we've learned how to move around our camera how about we go to the next part of the tutorial now here's the part I bet some of y'all were interested in moving and rotating our models so 
this part it's gonna take a moment we're gonna hop back into our work camera hitting that also pro tip if you hold control and then click on where it says camera one you'll have your ca work camera appear where that is disable our lighting and if we hold control you can see that there's a skeleton for our model you can also access these by hitting these if you want to get specific bones and you can click on them of course oh, that's something for a later day <laughs> but you can also click hold control click 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 if you want to rotate a bunch of parts to the body but anyway on to moving and rotating the body you have three different forms of moving w for well we have w which access the move the global move we have e that adds the ro the global rotation and r which is screen screen or well we're just going to move based off of screen because this just rotates things on the axis and if you want to freely move it just move it around the middle also control z if you want to undo stuff but anyway if we go into our screen we can both move and rotate stuff now be a little careful this can be a little buggy at angles like you might try to move it up and it'll move like that so be a little careful but anyway now we can control click rotate control click rotate control click rotate control click go to e rotate and then you can see we have a little bit of rotation going on. Control R rotate. Control rotate. Control rotate. Control rotate. And you can see we have a bit of a pose going on. Now, if we want to get some movement into the picture, we can hit the hit, just click on the model and hit M to set keyframes. This is important because you need a place that you want things to start. Now, this is just going to be basic movement because I want to go more in depth on that on another video. Now let's go, let's grab the torso. Now you see I moved on off of the graph editor into, the, well, the motion editor to the graph editor. <sighs> this is just because, well, you can't get keyframes in the graph in the motion editor. <laughs> I'm stumbling on my words, but anyway, let's hop, hop, hop. Let's move it a little bit. And another keyframe was made. Now this, that's the movement. Now you'll want to try to find a good balance. You can click and drag keyframes. There's a lot of things you can do with keyframes. And let's do some more movement. You can also do that. Now let's just go back. To where it was like that move a little bit and also you can hold space to play and this is a thing that I usually do for movement space pause move and then you just kind of spam that a little bit it's not recommended for all movements because you cannot get really exact movements with it so I would just kind of mess around with that. Or if you want to move around the keyframes, you can do that too. No one's going to judge you unless your animation looks bad. <laughs> but anyway, I have these keyframes move. And voila. An important thing you can also do if you want to select multiple bones, hold control and then hold left click, you create a little lay so and you can move things accordingly but it looks a little funky so how about we just hit go here select the bones like I said earlier and whoop, 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 whoop. he's looking all around hello there now that's a way you can move eyes or multiple bones that work accordingly such as ears which you can select with laso move them like that and that's all we're gonna be doing for movements for today and I think it's about time to move on to the next section of this tutorial because this has gone on for a little long. I'm going to start going a little bit faster, going on with the light settings. So let's enable our lighting again. And you can see that it's looking really bad. So let's go to our light. 
there's some there are plenty of settings here compared to like the camera you have your intensity which is the brightness of the camera your field of view which can or your FOV which usually just makes the light bigger and whatnot you can also affect this by scrolling in and out scrolling out like that makes the light bigger and doing this makes the light makes it smaller your radius well it just creates multiple versions of said light because compared and that it can be used for solid fill light shadow filter size you see our, we got little funky shadows if you want to sharpen them use that shadow attention let's just put that all the way down and voila all this little bright stuff that should not be affected by the light is no longer now we can also mess with colors well if you take down red you'll get more of a kind of bluish green color because at, with all the lights up red green and blue all equal white in this in this situation so if you want to blend colors for example make purple get rid of some green you get a bit of a purple color but if you want like a bluish purple get rid of some red if you want a bit of a yellow color get rid of blue want orange get rid of that but play around with those settings because you can get some interesting little you can get interesting color combinations by messing around with these and it's an important little part of setting up a scene because you can't have a scene without solid without let your lights let me set up a little scene in here I'm not going to be going too much into it but just showing you kind of how things are kind of done in a way I'm personally not the best at lighting some of you watching this tutorial may be better than me in some ways but we're just setting up some basic scene lighting just just to make Springtrap a little more understood we're using some of the lights that we that I taught here or the settings like radius for both of these lights and you can see because usually your radius lights are a lot quieter than your normal lights like this one right here and let's set up a red under light make it very quiet I, I like using the word quiet for lights I don't know why and bam bam and it shouldn't be too strong voila let's make it a little bit darker make sure our scene is selected and there we go let's hit control s like we don't have really good movement but you know it's better than nothing I got a little bit of light and I'm happy so let's go on to the next part of the tutorial now while we are unable to see it I have a model set up under here and what I have, if we hit this button, which will hide the model, and this, which will hide the bones, which, if you see here, they're still visible, but bam, they're gone. Click that, we got a skeleton, and bam, we have a scout. What I'm using the scout here for is to show sliders, because I haven't really gone into detail with them, and a lot of Five Nights at Freddy's models don't really have much of sliders. So let's go a little closer to the face, and you can see he's got a very default face, so... These are what I'm going to call sliders, because that's what they're called, or shape keys. They're very self-explanatory. You, like, you mix and match them. Like, if you want the eyes to go down, you go down, left, right, left, right. And there are things for all sorts of, there are sliders for all sorts of things. Mix and match them to your own desire. And s some models even have options where with this left and right thing up here, you can... That would apply to only a certain part of the face. Like, for example, let's see. Like, some of them are not going to work. But, like, like, let's see what we can do here. You see, we have a little more of a kind of angry face, but... What, what we were pretty much just going here for is like just just teaching the basics of the sliders let's let's have him close his eye a little little bit looking like an ugly fool but you know what maybe that's how it's supposed to be I don't know oh, you can't even affect have that effect just that but anyway there we go there's our slider basics there's going to be a tutorial later for some other things involving sliders, but for now, 
I think this basic little teaching is fine. So let's hop into the next session. And finally, for this tutorial, we're hopping back to Springtrap. You got yourself a final product. You made yourself a little poster. And let's, let's render. What you're going to want to do, hit File. Let's save, which you can just do with Control S. I would, I would recommend saving multiple times. Now, here you can go to Movie, Poster, or Image. I recommend going to Movie for most things, and you're going to click that and you'll get something over here and you're going to need um, QuickTime for some of these settings and I'll recommend you to download it. I'll have a link for QuickTime in the description below because it, it might be a little bit tedious to get to unless there's a link here I forgot but anyway we're gonna have our movie have it as a movie I'm not gonna render this obviously and let's set it to or keep it as an mp4 have our sequence or here we have sequence custom shots or selected shots and custom custom you can type in the time frame but if you go to selected shots it'll render all that you have here and nothing else but you'll have to click and highlight shots which is done with control click that's how you usually select multiple of stuff and then here you have more options yes we do what we have here are your just your stuff like progressive refinement yeah yeah you, you don't know about this stuff yet there's plenty of settings here but we'll get to those later now what you might want to do is click here go to your designated SFM folder and go let, let's tutorial and you might want to make a folder specific to your render and name it something like render you export your movie or you can export an image sequence, which that's honestly what I do, but you to each their own. And for the basics, I think that I've covered all that there is to offer for the moment. I will be trying to do more of these episodes frequently, but I don't want to wear myself out too much because it took me it took a lot for me to make this, and I've been trying to record for a good little bit. This is probably going to be longer than I wanted it to be, but... Most of the tutorials will either be specific things or they're going to be a lot shorter, designated to maybe a couple things per video. And next time, I don't know what I'm planning on exactly. I'm probably working on camera settings and lighting settings specifically because there's a lot to cover with the camera and there's a lot to cover with the lights. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. and. If you, if you did and want some more tutorials, then smash that little like button down there. And if you're new to the channel and you like Five Nights at Freddy's content and maybe some other stuff in the future, animations in general, or tutorials, you can subscribe for more content. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope this was informative for you, and I hope to be teaching you next time. Take care.